Hey guys, I'm Kieran McLean and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about the renal diet and I thought I would try something a bit different this week, see how it goes. And instead of sitting here in my bedroom and just talking to you guys, I thought whilst I gave you some interesting facts and information about the renal diet, I would make a carbonara and combine the two things into one and give you a bit of a different style of content. So hopefully it all goes well. And I'll catch you guys in a minute when I'm down in the kitchen. I'll see you there. Hey everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Now a renal diet is very important to make sure you monitor properly when you're suffering with kidney disease. As you can help prolong your kidney function and help you live a healthier life. Now there are five key parts to a renal diet, which doctors and consultants tend to make sure you're looking after yourself and monitoring. So these five things are protein, potassium, sodium, fluid intake, and phosphate. Now I'll go into more information about each of these as we start getting through our carbonara. I'll see you in the next bit. So first things first is the protein. Now, ironically here, I'm gonna be cutting up some chicken as we talk about the protein. Now protein is a key part of anyone's diet. But when you're suffering with kidney disease, you have to make sure you're not having too much or too little. Now having too little protein can make you feel fatigued and feel unwell as you already have a loss of energy. And without your protein, you could feel like you've got no energy at all. On the other hand, having too much protein can increase your urea levels in your blood. Now urea is a waste product that's made within the kidneys and having too much protein can build up the waste amount in your kidneys and obviously if your kidneys aren't fl um, flushing it out then you get a build up within your blood. Now the main best recommended proteins for on a renal diet is meat, poultry, eggs and fish. Okay I've just finished the chicken and now I'm going to cut up some bacon. Now bacon isn't as recommended as other meats as it is slightly saltier and has a bit more salt than most other meats. But today we're gonna have it as I've already had a transplant and it's not too much of an issue now, but it also blends in with the next topic, which is salt and sodium. Now when suffering with kidney disease, cutting down on salt is a, one of the key factors that you must do. Now having too much salt in your diet can increase your blood pressure um, with already having kidney disease. That can be dangerous as having um, low kidney function anyway will build up your yeah, blood pressure. So having two reasons to have an increased blood pressure can be dangerous at times. Another problem of increased sodium levels is it can increase the swelling within your body and it can retain fluid more. So that combined with a decreased kidney function can increase your swelling even more to the point where you're very discomfort very uncomfortable. The best way to adjust to this low salt diet is to start off by not adding any salt into whatever you're cooking at all, as most foods generally have to have natural salts in it anyway, so you don't really need the additional salt. Once you've got used to that, then you can start looking for foods that have lower salt intake. Okay, so now we've cut up the chicken and bacon, and we put it all in a pot with some onions, garlic and Dijon mustard and now onto the potassium. Now potassium is especially important as too much potassium can sometimes in a rare case prove fatal to people. Now a low potassium diet tends to be recommended and started when you are in definite kidney failure as at this point, your kidneys are unable to remove the excess potassium from your bloodstream and the buildup of potassium can have a, a bad effect on your heart and can even lead to heart attacks in some circumstances. Now, potassium is a very interesting thing in a diet as quite a lot of fruit and veg, including mushrooms, tomatoes and bananas, are very high in potassium. So I need to try and avoid those as much as possible. Hence why I'm making a creamy based pasta dish rather than a tomato based one. 
And this car carbonara doesn't have any mushrooms. Although I would sometimes have mushrooms now I've had a transplant. Chocolate's also very high in potassium. However, gummy sweets and hard boiled sweets are actually okay for you. And when it comes to crisps, always look for the corn based snacks rather than the potato based ones as potatoes are high in potassium also. So when it comes to cooking potatoes or boiling potatoes, you have to rinse them out and let them soak for a couple hours before using them. Okay, now so now the meat's cooking through, we're gonna move on to the carbonara sauce. So in here, I've got some Greek yogurt and some eggs, which I'm about to whisk. So when it comes to fluids, you would think with kidney disease, that you should drink plenty and keep hydrated. Now that's the case for when you're after transplant, but when you're in kidney failure, you're usually told to keep your fluid intake to a minimum. Now this tends to be around the one liter a day mark, but depending on the severity on the person and probably the illness, that changes. This is due to if you're drinking too much with a low kidney function, it can lead to swelling in the body as your kidneys are unable to flush out the fluid quick enough as you're putting it in. And it can also lead to a shortness of breath, which leads on to an increased blood pressure also. However, post-transplant, you're usually taught to drink two to three, at least two to three litres of water a day. As getting the kidney, new kidney function and working as much as it can will help improve its function and get it to last longer. Okay, so now we're onto the final bit where we add the carbonara sauce into the spaghetti and the meat. So last but not least is the phosphate. Now phosphate is a natural mineral that's found within the blood. And normally kidneys will filter out the excess phosphate that's produced in the blood. However, that's the same as all the rest of them. With a low kidney function, your kidneys are unable to do this properly, which then obviously leaves a buildup of phosphate within the blood. Now having too much phosphate within your system can lead to effects on the heart, on your bones, and can leave you with very, very itchy skin. Trust me, I know. <laughs> now the most common foods to find phosphate within is dairy products, other than your creams, natural yogurts and cream cheeses, which is why this carbonara is not a milky one <laughs> or a cheesy one, as a matter of fact. It can also be found in chocolate, but not sweets. And it can also be found in darker fizzy drinks, but not the lighter ones. So it can be found in like Coke, but it can't really be found in lemonade. So yeah, thank you so much for watching today, guys. I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed this slight switch up this week. It's the first time trying something different, so excuse if it's a bit choppy. But yeah, I'm sat here now with my carbonara, and I'll see you all in next week's video. Goodbye.